Hi everyone, my name is Ribhu. I am with the Department of Electronics and Electrical Engineering IIT Guwahati and a very warm welcome to this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. So this course is basically meant for uh, third year or fourth year undergraduate students or postgraduate students who had some background in communication systems, analog, digital. We will mainly focus on digital communications. Uh, I will cover some basics along the way and uh, want to simulate those in MATLAB. Our focus in this course will be on MATLAB. Of course, uh, with some syntactical differences, everything developed in this course can be extended to Python as well. That uh, might be the subject of another course some other day, but right now we'll focus on MATLAB and uh, we'll focus on uh, simulating these systems. So these slides will be made available on the course website uh, as time progresses. And uh, first things first, so we'll first look at the books that will be used for this course. So the first book that primary book that we will use for this course is uh, based around MATLAB since this course is based around MATLAB. The first book we'll be using is uh, by Rudra Pratap, Getting Started with MATLAB, A Quick Introduction for Scientists and Engineers by Oxford University Press, published in 2010. This is a very good book. You can uh, easily find it. The second book we'll use is uh, by Proke Salehi and Bok. And this is called Contemporary Communication Systems Using MATLAB, third edition. This is also easily available. Then if you have had a background in communication systems, you might know that uh, all practical communication systems use some amount of probability theory. So I assume that uh, you know some basic probability theory. For some advanced topics like uh, we will discuss Markov chains and we will discuss uh, random processes. For all those ideas, we'll use Sheldon Ross's book, uh, Introduction to Probability Models, 12th edition, and that was published in 2019. And at times, we might need to cover topics related to linear regression. We will actually cover linear regression and uh, some basic ideas from machine learning. And for those, we will use uh, Simon Hakin's adaptive filter theory. Please note that uh, we won't be doing machine learning as a pure machine learning course, but uh, we will do the linear flavor of it, which is adaptive filtering. So, we will uh, touch upon some adaptive filtering and hence uh, we will use ideas from Simon Hakin's adaptive filter theory textbook. So, since this is a probability course and uh, this is mainly based around since this is mainly based around ideas from probability theory. So, we will uh, talk about random experiments, how to simulate those. We will talk about games of chance and uh, again how to simulate those. We will talk about practical systems and how randomness are, comes in those practical systems and obviously how we simulate that and uh, then we talk about randomness in design and how does this randomness affect our design solutions. So to emphasize the need for this course, let me take an example and uh, let's uh, show a cartoon. So I believe this cartoon is visible on your screen right now. So this is Kelvin and Hobbes. And copyright by Bill Watterson, I am just using it for this video. So how does it affect us? So Calvin and his family are going on a road trip and uh, Calvin asks his dad, how do they load limit on the bridges? So say there is a board saying that uh, the load limit is 10 tons. So dad, unaware of how these things work, uh, says that they drive bigger and bigger trucks over the bridge and when it breaks, they reconstruct the bridge and uh, tell you that, okay, this is the maximum weight that you can carry over the bridge. Unfortunately, this would cost a lot of money. You take a bridge, you build it uh, again, break it once and uh, not a good idea. And uh, mom, in case, simply represents that. This is not how it works. Yes, this is not how it works. You cannot take Kipling too seriously. Let us look at what Kipling says as well. So if you can make one heap of your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. But uh, a bridge collapses because uh, you have uh, run too many heavy trucks on it. Obviously, a lot of people will breathe a lot of unflattering words about your loss. So that's not uh, how these systems work. What we need is that uh, we shouldn't have to break the bridge once and reconstruct it just to do that. That's not true just for bridges. That's true for a lot of practical systems. You want to try a new cell phone technology. Say, 
5G is popular these days when these radios are being recorded. Maybe you want to test a new 5G system. You don't go putting around uh, faulty equipment in people's uh, cell phones and ask them that, hey, this might fry your brains, but uh, this is a new piece of technology that uh, we want to use. That's not uh, how communication systems are supposed to work. You cannot risk frying people's brains because of that. So, you have to be careful or uh, there should be something that you should be able to do before uh, you try on some new technology or you before you deploy a system and that's where simulation helps you. Simulation basically means that uh, you are uh, essentially creating a model or uh, we'll discuss what models are and so simulation basically means that uh, you're trying to mimic the practical system in such a way that uh, you can uh, know what are the possible pitfalls, what are the possible costs without uh, actually getting into or without actually making any losses. So, this course will be all about uh, how do we use programming to simulate our practical systems before we put our money into it. So, these are the topics that we will cover in this course. So, I have divided this course into three broader units. So, the first will be fundamental that will cover MATLAB because we are using MATLAB. So, we will do some basic programming and uh, uh, we will know how MATLAB works, what are data types, what are scripts, what are functions. We will do some basic signal analysis since communication systems are all about signals. So, we will talk about the signals involved in communication systems and uh, we will do some basic signal analysis. We will revisit Fourier series, we will revisit Fourier transform, we will revisit the fast Fourier transform and uh, then we will touch upon Monte Carlo method. So, these Monte Carlo methods are the point where we introduce this is the point where we will introduce randomness into the system or how does uh, a random system behave we will talk about that in uh, this part. Then once we are acquainted with the uh, how to generate randomness in a simulation system, in a computer system. Uh, we will start talking about how do we generate random processes. So, what are these? How are these important? And how to generate these? Then once we have modeled random processes, we will uh, touch upon data compression. So, we will talk about uh, since we are doing MATLABs, we will talk about uh, signal processing models for lossy data compression. So, the entire title of this chapter should be for lossy. We will mainly do, we will mainly talk about text, speech and videos, but uh, we will also give a general insight into how compression works. Obviously, we won't be talking about the information theoretic aspects of uh, lossy compression. You might uh, want to visit an information theory course for that. Then we will come to the main topic of this uh, course that is simulation of baseband communication systems. We will understand what are baseband communication systems, how do we simulate these and uh, how do we interpret the numbers. Then there are uh, certain communication systems that require the use of memory and uh, there is the idea of equalization. For those, we will need to learn some machine learning ideas or some data science ideas. So, I have put them into a separate chapter and uh, linear regression. So, and its application to so we will talk about linear regression and uh, its applications to communication systems. We will talk about Markov chains modulation with memory and 
Viterbi be decoding. And finally, we will come on to the advanced part of our course if and when time permits, queuing and network traffic modeling. So, we will do queuing and network traffic modeling in the end if time permits. So, these are the three parts of this course. Now, I will end this lecture or I will end this session by introducing the basic ideas. So, what is a model? There are obviously Instagram models these days, but uh, we will not talk about those. Uh, so, you might remember in your school days, uh, you would be cutting balls in half, making a model of earth, you might be making a, most of you would have done uh, that uh, volcano experiment, you put vinegar, you put uh, baking soda and it uh, gives you a, an illusion of a bursting volcano. Uh, obviously, these are some certain basic ideas that were tried in my school, there are uh, other models as well. So, a model is something. I'll be basic idea. So, I'll be talking about colloquial definitions. So, so these are just the colloquial definitions of these ideas, not uh, precise mathematical or not exact definitions. I'm just, this is an introductory lecture. So, a model. So, presentation or you get uh, very expensive toys saying that uh, this is an exact model of this expensive car or this is an exact model of this expensive motorcycle and uh, what you have is uh, there are all those little parts that are exactly like the original. So, basically a model is something that uh, makes a good mimicry, not making fun of it, makes that uh, does a mimicry of a proper physical system. Then the second thing is mathematical model. We can model a lot of physical systems using equations. So, any equation, so a system or a model physical system using equations. So, how do you say that uh, how we can represent a physical system using equations? Newton told you that uh, if an apple falls, you can calculate its exact speed using Newton's uh, gravity or uh, then there are uh, the equations of motion that is uh, you have an initial velocity, you have a final velocity, you have its relation with the distance and acceleration obviously there is a third derivative called the jerk as well, but uh, so you have equations of motion that uh, govern the properties of uh, moving objects in acceleration free systems. So, those are mathematical models of motion. There are the models of thermodynamics that you have done in your basic physics courses and obviously since uh, we are electrical engineers, you have this uh, thing that starts it all. that uh, two charges Q1 and Q2 separated Coulomb's law, two charges Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance R would exert a force, a repulsive force assuming that uh, the charges have the same sign will exert a repulsive force this upon each other. Oh, sorry, epsilon naught, my bad. I will rewrite the denominator. will exert this much repulsive force on each other. This is the Coulomb's law. So, this is a mathematical equation governing uh, a physical system. You cannot see charges definitely and uh, so this will be Newton's the charges are in Coulomb's. So, uh, these are deterministic system models and obviously similar to this, there is the idea of simulation models. You might uh, want to simulate a crowd. There are crowd simulation games uh, yeah, that you can play on your phone these days. So. Basically, you want you have a system, the system is behaving randomly and you want to mimic uh, that randomness in that system. So, you want to use that. So, how do we develop these simulation? Uh, mathematical models are something that I believe that you understand. Simulation models, uh, we will talk about how we develop these simulation models in the rest of this course. So, the first chapter that we will cover is MATLAB. That will be the topic of the next lecture and uh, 
that's all for this lecture thank you very much